Okay, so we're looking at six bonding groups, uh, or I should say six electron groups, which could be six bonding groups in the case of sulfur hexafluoride. All of the six electrons um, groups are involved in bonds. So here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. So there's our six electron groups. The shape is octahedral with respect to the electron arrangement. But since all of the electrons are involved in bonds, we would say that the, the shape of the molecule is also octahedral, not just the electron structure. Okay, then our second possibility with six electron groups, or six pairs of electrons, is IF5. Here we have five bonding pairs of electrons, one, two, three, four, five, but we've got one lone pair, and that lone pair pushes all of these up and repels them more than this bonding pair. And the shape we have is square pyramidal. You can see that pretty clearly. So lastly, what I want to show you is of the um, octahedral electron arrangement is where we have only four of the six electron groups uh, that are bonding, and then two will be lone pair. So the example here is xenon tetrafluoride. So let's draw that with Vesper. So xenon is not going to have an octet. It already has an octet. It's got uh, six pairs of electrons around it. Uh, four of them are bonding, and then it's got two pairs or two electron groups that are non-bonding. So that would be our Lewis structure. We can go ahead and put the electrons around our fluorines. And again, only the fluorines obey the octet rule. Xenon doesn't. This thing does exist, though, so we have to come up with a model to explain it. Okay, so let's draw this using the Vesper, that this is Lewis structure. Let's use the valence shell electron pair repulsion model for xenon tetrafluoride. So I'm going to put my xenon in the middle and I'm going to draw a rectangle around it. This rectangle doesn't represent bonds what it does is it represents the shape and it gives perspective to this particular molecule. Again, these are not bonds. The bonds will be between the xenon and the fluorine. The fluorines are not bonded with each other. You might want to be thinking about what other possible elements we could replace xenon with. Okay, so I'm going to put the fluorine here, 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 and here. Now I haven't even drawn a single bond yet. I just drew the plane. So let's just do our bonds in blue again. And we're going to have a wedge coming out towards, from the xenon, towards that fluorine to demonstrate that it's coming out of the plane towards us. And then we're going to draw another wedge to that fluorine. So those are coming out. And then we're going to draw our hash marks going back. towards these other two fluorines. So that's four of our six electron groups. The other two, as we see up here, are going to be non-bonding or lone pairs. Non-bonding electrons synonymous with lone pairs. So there we have it. Um, one of these 
pairs would be up above the plane, be up here, and the other pair would be down below if we wanted to look at it that way. And then the fluorines are in the same plane. So what is the shape? Well, obviously, the shape is square planar, and let's draw the angles. Is this going to be 90 degrees, uh, like it is with sulfur hexafluoride, where all the angles are 90? Or will it be less than 90 degrees, as it is with iodine pentafluoride? So let's look. It all depends on the lone pairs and bonding pairs. Well, it turns out that all four of these angles are going to be 90 degrees. That's because this lone pair is, is pushing down on our four bonds, and this lone pair is pushing up on our four bonds, all with the same amount of repelling force. So that keeps this a true plane where everything is flat. The xenon is in the same plane as the fluorine. So all my angles are going to be 90 degrees. That makes this square planar. If we go up here to IF5, you might notice that the iodine is not in the same plane as the four fluorines because these electrons are pushing up with greater force than these uh, electrons here with that fluorine are pushing down. So only the four fluorines are truly in the same plane, whereas in this case, with xenon tetrafluoride, everything's in the same plane, and all the angles between atoms of fluorine are 90 degrees.